welcome to the Dr. Franca Villa Show. In this episode, we are talking about the importance of backup plans. So this assumes you have a plan of some sort for your health to begin with. So if you don't, then, you know, let's make one. But you probably have some plan, some intention of what you are trying to do to live your best healthy life. And today we're going to talk about how backup plans are going to be your key to success. So backup plans are essential. And I don't know if anyone has already coined this, but if they haven't, I would like to coin being the queen of backup plans. I love a good backup plan. Okay, so today I am inspired because it is a snow day here in Colorado. It is very cold and snowy, but in my opinion, not so cold and snowy that we needed to cancel everything. But last night, I was looking at a few snowflakes and I was hearing rumors on Facebook and I thought they're going to call a snow day tomorrow and I'm going to not have any childcare. I have patients to see. I have a lecture to record. I have a podcast to record. I cannot have my little kids running around the house screaming. I need a backup plan. So before it was even called as a snow day, I started talking to my husband. What was his availability? What could he do tomorrow? Talk to grandma, my mom, and said, you know, like, would you be able to watch the kids if there was a snow day? Started thinking about other options, you know, where there's some neighbors that could maybe do some play dates. Who could help me so that I could do the things I needed to do so that I could stick to my plan, even though the world was trying to change the plan that I had started. So uh, that was the inspiration for today. And my backup plan worked. My mother gratefully uh, took care of the kids today so that I could do the things that that I planned to do and my kids could still be someplace safe. So while some people were like, woohoo, it's no day, I was like, this is messing with my plan. But since I'm the queen of backup plans, it was okay. So how does this apply to your health? Well, you're going to have all sorts of intentions around nutrition, exercise, sleep, all sorts of behaviors that you want to do. And if you don't have a backup plan for when things get unexpected, then you're going to get steered off your path. So today we're going to dive into what backup plans around food, exercise, and medication might look like. And hopefully you'll leave coming up with some backup plans of your own. Have I said the term backup enough today? So uh, my husband does not like when I pester him about backup plans. Um, he thinks that it is a sign. I think I'm going to, that he is going to fail with something. He He's like, why do I need a backup plan? Don't you think I can do this? I'm like, yeah, I do. And I really, really want you to be successful at it. And that is why I think we should have a backup plan because if you are committed to success, you need a plan to get there. Sometimes I think about, you know, if you were driving home, maybe from work or you went out for dinner or movie and the road you normally take home had a big accident and the road was blocked off, you wouldn't just give up and say, well, I guess I'm not going home today, right? You would take the detour that they set up for you, or you would turn around and go a different way, or you would turn on your GPS and see what the other ways of getting home were. So we have plans and other points in our life, but I think sometimes we get really black and white about our nutrition or our exercise. You know, we're either eating the chicken breast and broccoli or going to CrossFit, or we're just going to like do nothing and eat all the pizza we want, right? So there is a middle ground and we are going to find it. So I am going to start off today talking about backup plans for food. I think food is a place people tend to get really black and white with their health. And in a lot of ways, that's probably because um, you've been told you'll have more success if you're stricter with your nutrition plan. And maybe you've even experienced that, right? The more strictly you stick to a nutrition plan, the better it works. And that's not untrue, but it can be unsustainable. And it doesn't account for the fact that life happens, right? Sometimes life happens and we have to adjust our plan. And, you know, as, uh, is it Elsa or Anna would say, do the next right thing. Like what is the best thing we can do in this situation? So in terms of food, let's kind of go through the day and, and see what that would look like if we were trying to just stick with our, our healthy habits, with our food intentions, and we have something unexpected happen. So let's start with breakfast. Right now, at least where I'm at, there's like this egg shortage going on. Egg is a pretty big staple in our household for breakfast. We like to have eggs pretty frequently. And if we're not having eggs, then often we're having some sort of homemade muffin that I make that we use eggs 
to, to make those muffins. So that could be a problem. So what would our backup be if normally our breakfast is eggs? Well, maybe we are going to go ahead and do a protein shake instead. Maybe we'll do Greek yogurt. Maybe we'll do cottage cheese. Maybe we will switch to those homemade muffins again. Oh, but those needed eggs too. Ah, quick Google search lets me know that flaxseed is a healthy egg alternative. So even though I may love eggs and that may seem like what I want to do for breakfast, there may be some options. Maybe I'll do a chicken sausage instead, right? So having that already in mind. The other thing that happens too, and I see this actually happens specifically with eggs a lot, is you get sick of it, right? So have a backup plan for when you get sick of it. You may think with your nutrition plan, like eggs, eggs are it. I'm going to have breakfast eggs every day. They keep me full. I love them. They keep me satisfied. And then after three months of that, you get sick of it. Well, what else could you have, right? What else is going to help you reach your goals? Instead of maybe going back to your old behavior, which maybe was going to Starbucks, getting the sweet coffee, getting the breakfast sandwich, having yourself do that every day again, that is not going to help you reach your goals, right? Okay, lunch. I am a huge fan of packing lunch. Um, I Every time I eat out for lunch, I'm shocked at how expensive it is. I can't imagine spending that much money every day. And uh, it's like inconvenient, in my opinion. It takes a lot more time to go and get lunch than to, to heat up leftovers or what I would normally bring. So bringing lunch is my healthy habit, but maybe yours is eating out. That's fine. And sometimes like maybe you had a really busy week and you don't have any food available to bring, or maybe you forget your lunch. Sometimes that happens, right? What is your backup plan going to be? So again, if maybe your plan is leftovers and you didn't have any leftovers from the meal, or maybe you normally make like a really nice salad with some chicken and berries on it, and you're out of those ingredients, what's your backup plan? Or you go to make them. If this ever happened, you go to make your salad and like, it's bad. It's like all wilted and gross. And you're like, that's not going to work. What's your backup plan? So my backup plan, I keep some frozen meals around that are reasonably healthy choices. I'm really into daily harvest right now. I think I get like a free meal or something if you click my link. So I'll put that in there. They're um, organic vegetarian meals. And those are getting me a lot of vegetables in. So that is one of my backups right now, right? Maybe you have a backup restaurant where you're like, if I forget my lunch, like, what am I going to do? You could have a backup restaurant. So that may be a restaurant where you know you can get a healthy option, a place that has a great salad. Um, I'm a huge Chipotle fan. So I have my bowl that I know I get there that has, you know, beans and it has peppers and it has corn salsa and it has chicken and guacamole. And it feels like a really balanced meal for for me. So you might have a balanced meal that you've already picked out at a restaurant. Now, if you wait for the emergency, and you wait until it's 1230 and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm starving. And your friend is like, I'm grabbing sandwiches. Do you want that? It's going to be really easy to say yes. But if you're like, no, my backup plan is this salad from this restaurant or this bowl from my favorite burrito place or, um, you know, th this specific meal at the restaurant in my town. Like if you know what that plan is, when that emergent situation comes up, you aren't going to have to be driven by impulse or hunger. You're already going to have an option that you know you like, but that fits with your health goals available. And then when you actually want to have a go have a fun lunch and you're doing it intentionally because you just want to enjoy it, then you do that intentionally. But if it's just like a daily thing, you're like, this is the first plan is that I pack my leftovers. If I don't have that, maybe I have my frozen meal. If I totally forget my lunch, then this is the restaurant that's my backup plan. The other thing I like to keep around my office is um, protein bars and protein shakes. I happen to get a lot of samples of those, but those are always around. And those are like a great backup. Like I totally forgot something or my lunch didn't fill me up as much as I thought. Just emergency food that's shelf stable and can stay there probably for years as an option. So those are some options that can be helpful for lunch. Again, you may have this like beautiful, you know, what are those mason jar salads that people like to make? Maybe you have something like that that's your plan. It's beautiful. It's Instagram worthy. But for whatever reason that plan doesn't happen, what is your backup plan? Okay. So those are some ideas for what lunch might look like for backup plan ideas. Okay. Dinner. Dinner can be a hard one, right? So I like to have, you know, dinners kind of planned out for the week, but 
sometimes the weekend gets away for you and you don't have time to like go to the grocery store or something. And then other times um, you might find that you um, are, uh, you know, like the food you want to make went bad. You go to make the chicken. It's like, it's, it's raw and it smells bad. You can't make it. So you have to figure out like, what are your backup plans going to be? So maybe again, you can have some frozen meals around that. Maybe they're not the ideal thing you would eat, but they feel healthy enough, balanced enough, and they fit with your plan. I'm a huge fan of bonza pasta. It's a chickpea pasta. I always like to have that around. My kids eat it. We can toss some sauce on it. We can add some, some ground meat if we have that around. But if nothing else, we have tomato sauce, chickpea pasta, reasonably healthy dinner. Maybe it's an omelet. Maybe you keep a rotisserie chicken around or there's a place near your home where you can grab a rotisserie chicken and just heat some frozen veggies with it. What are those easy backup meal plans for when you don't have the bandwidth to plan something? Maybe when you make um, a big pot of soup or chili, you can freeze some of that and keep that as an emergency rainy day meal for yourself. Um, or again, those restaurant plans. But if your plan is just to go to a restaurant, things might get out of hand, right? You're hungry, you're tired from the day, you might emotionally eat, you might just, you know, let loose. And at that point, you might eat food that is not really consistent with how you're intending to eat. So again, if you have backup restaurant plans where you can get delivery, or you know, you can go and that you absolutely love, you know, th their fish and vegetable dish, or you love their salad dish, or they have a keto meal that's on plan for you or whatever it is, your place where you know you can get food that sticks with your plan, have that backup restaurant plan. Don't wait until it's seven o'clock at night and you're starving and stressed because that's when you're going to get pizza and cheeseburgers and things that may not be part of your plan. Again, if you want to enjoy those things, sometimes great. But if your plan was, oh, I'm already doing that Friday, you know, I'm going out with my friends and today I, you know, want to try to eat more balanced, but you know, like the week has gotten away from me. Now you might end up eating pizza three times this week, right? That is not going to help you reach your health goals. So having a backup plan for feud is huge. Okay. Moving on to exercise, having a backup plan for exercise is also, um, really important. I personally like to just set an intention to move every day. And so that may mean something gentle for me, which is like yoga or going on a walk. Um, but, you know, it's that intention to move every day. Um, sometimes it's a hobby like skiing or hiking, um, but having some sort of intention in place of, of, of movement. Um, and my goal for me is if I do it, if I plan for seven days a week, I'll probably end up doing it five days a week because, you know, life and stuff is going to come up on some of the other days. Some of the challenges that can come up with exercise is maybe you have a class that you like to go to. You've created that structure so that you know you go but your class gets canceled or you get held up at work or traffic and you're late to it. What are you going to do, right? Do you just show up late and do what you can? Do they allow that? My gym does, thankfully. Um, do you uh, have a backup plan where you're like, well, fine, then instead I'll go home and I know that I have this, you know, one or two mile loop I can do instead. Do you go home and you have a backup video that you like to do? There's so many fitness videos available. I'm a huge Peloton fan. There's Apple Fitness. There's all sorts of free stuff on YouTube, right? Maybe it's not as good as the workout you were planning to do, but it's some movement and movement is so powerful to our health. So then you're at least getting something in. Other issues that can come up with exercise, if you like to walk and it's a snow day like it is today, that may be a challenge. Maybe you're just like, okay, my backup plan is snow pants and boots, but maybe you're like, no, it's not safe for me. I don't want to, it's too cold or I'm worried about falling on the ice. What's your backup plan for indoor exercise? Again, can it be one of those videos? Do you have a Peloton bike? Do you have a treadmill? Do you have an old elliptical? Can you get a little stair stepper? Those are super cheap online and you can do a little, little stair stepper in your home to get a little movement in. Um, so those are some backup ideas for exercise, but have a plan in place, have that commitment that if you, if the plan A doesn't work, what is the next plan, right? Maybe you normally work out in the morning and you miss that morning workout for whatever reason. Well, can you, can you do something in the evening? Maybe it's not as long, maybe in the hour, in the morning, you do an hour long walk, but in the evening, you only have time for 20 minutes. That's still great, right? That is better than not doing anything and getting out of the pattern. 
Another thing that can interrupt exercise is injury or illness. You know, if you're ill, you might need to take some time off from exercise, but sometimes injuries can really hold you up. You know, if your knee's bothering you or your foot, that may dramatically change what you can do, but usually it doesn't mean you can't do anything, right? So you may need to work with a physical therapist or a personal trainer to figure out some modifications, or you might just need to use some common sense, right? My foot is injured, but my upper body's just fine, right? I could still do some upper body weights. I I can use like a, an arm spinner. Like what can I still do? Um, so that would be a tip if you're injured is like, maybe you still can't do the exercise you'd prefer to do, but you could still do something. And what is that? Maybe, maybe it's doing yoga. Maybe you need to do PT for your injury. And so you just really commit to doing that physical therapy, that PT every day so that your injury will recover. And that becomes your exercise in that time period. Another technique is to do something similar that self-care in your exercise time period. So let's say you really are committed to dedicating 30 minutes to exercise every day, but maybe you're not feeling great. Maybe you're feeling really tired. Maybe you have worked out four or five days that week and your body's kind of telling you need to rest. Maybe you do something gentle like yoga. Maybe that even feels like too much. That might be a great time to do meditation, right? Maybe it's not really exercise, but it is preserving that time for self-care and keeping that habit alive of that, that 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it is that you're doing in your schedule. So that might be a technique that you could use in order to keep that habit alive and keep some of that self-care alive and, and get some benefit from that time period. So Definitely have a plan, a backup plan for exercise, weather gets in the way, schedule gets in the way, illness, injury gets in the way. It may not be your first choice of exercise that you're going to do if those things happen, but you can do probably something minimally to keep that habit going and to keep feeling good from that movement. Another issue that I'll see for my patients is stopping a medication. When I see a patient and I'm thinking of a medicine, whether it's for weight or something else, the depression or reflux, I'm always thinking of all the possible options, which one makes the most sense for my patient. But I have a whole list of other ideas that I probably could use. Sometimes I'll share that with my patients. Sometimes I just have them as ideas to myself of what else we could use if the first thing isn't working. So if you are on a medication for weight or for anything else, and it seems like it's not, not working or it's giving you a side effect you don't like, or your insurance stopped covering it, or the medication is out, having a lot of that right now, make sure you're reaching out to your doctor so that you can troubleshoot that. They probably have something that can help with the side effects. They probably have an alternative. They probably can help you figure out where to get your medication or what to switch to. So if your medicine that you're using is, is not available, is not working, again, like there are backup plans available. So reach out to whoever's prescribing that medicine so they can help out. And if that medicine is a weight loss medicine, an anti-obesity medication, and it, it's not working and you've tried a few things, maybe your backup plan is surgery, right? Maybe you need to consider bariatric surgery. And I have someone in the lineup pretty soon to talk more about bariatric surgery. So really excited to have her on the podcast. So I am a huge planner and I love a backup plan. Again, queen of the backup plan. And your homework for today is to come up with a backup plan of your own. Maybe you struggle sometimes with being consistent with nutrition. I want you to go ahead and write down breakfast, lunch, dinner. What are two or three backups for what your intended meal is? What could you do instead if the meal that you like to do or that you think is best for your health doesn't work out? What's the next best thing, right? Same thing for exercise. What's your plan? And then what are some realistic backups that you could do anywhere, right? That you could do on vacation, that you could do on a snow day, that you could do when you're tired, Come up with some backup plan for backup plans for exercise. And then finally, come up with um, a backup plan for medications if you're on them. If you don't have that plan, reach out to your doctor. We have all sorts of plans. If there was something that worked in the past and you want to restart something, um, you know, we have tools for all of that. So I think if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. There are always going to be unexpected things that come up. There is always a solution and it's going to be a lot less stressful and a lot more successful if you figure out what those solutions could be ahead of time. All right. Until next week, take care. Thank you for listening to the Dr. Frank Avila show, where we learn about all things related to weight and health. If you love this podcast, make sure to leave those five-star reviews and share this podcast with a friend or loved one. If you have a topic about weight and health you want me to tackle, head over to the website, thedrfrankavillashow.com to submit your question. 
and make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss next week's episode. Take care.